let's get into five tips that have helped me grow almost 4,000 subscribers in 15 days. We have grown almost 4,000 subscribers in 15 days. How did we do it? Let's get into some tips that helped me grow in the last 15 days. I am one of those people I am learning with you. I'm not a channel that's going to tell you how to grow 10,000 subscribers in two days. I haven't done it. If you know how to do it, comment below. Let me know. I'm also not one of those that's going to be like, oh, I grew 100,000 in two months. Maybe it's slow and steady over here and we love it. As I learn, I want to teach. I feel like in another life, I could have been a teacher. Let's get into five tips that have helped me grow almost 4,000 subscribers in 15 days. Hi, my name is Fumi Ford. I'm a content creator based out of Birmingham, Alabama, but she's a Nigel babe. We are taking off our luxury hat and we're putting on our entrepreneurship hat. We are girls, girls over here. So we're going to do our best to grow together. So when it comes to YouTube, one thing that I'm going to start out with is consistency. And I know people say that all the time, but you have to be consistent on this platform. Even if you're not consistent on any other platform, you are not going to get rewarded on this one unless you have a schedule and you are consistent. Now, frequency and consistency, two different things. Frequency is how much you're going to do it. Consistency is doing it when you say you're going to do it. When I started out on YouTube, I started strong. Baby, I was going to do three days a week. Nobody was going to tell me I couldn't do three days a week. I was determined. Comment below and let me know how long you think I did it for. <laughs> I went one week doing three, three videos a week. One week. The second week, I was like, oh, you know what, Fumi? You can come down to two. Then I went down to two the next week. Then I was like, you know what? You're a wife. You're a mom. You're, you're struggling. Just do one day a week. Then I started doing one day a week. And then I quit for nine months. <laughs> I quit for nine months. And you know why I quit? Because I was putting so much work in and I wasn't seeing the results. Like, I would spend hours down in my deep, dark, damp basement recording these videos, editing it by myself for 10 people to watch. Like, literally, I would come back six hours later to three views. I would close out the program and say, okay, feel me, stop, stop babysitting me. Come back. I would come back 10 hours later, seven views. And I was like, you know what? My man got two jobs. I do not need YouTube. I, what, what does YouTube have that TikTok and Instagram doesn't? And so I quit. And for nine months, I never, I never touched my YouTube. I wasn't even uploading shorts. I would upload shorts maybe once every three months. This platform gingered me so much for an entire year i just didn't touch it i would put a video every now and then but no two i just didn't see my efforts paying off i saw my efforts paying off on tiktok and i saw my efforts paying off well no it never paid off on instagram but i saw it paying off on tiktok so for a year i concentrated on that platform and that's not bad go where your money and your audience is so one thing i'll tell you one tip is whatever platform is giving you joy, whatever platform the brands are finding you on, whatever platform your audience is finding you, give that the most time and energy. What I could have done during those nine months was be consistent with posting shorts, repurposing my TikTok and Instagram and putting it on shorts. But the, I was so burned out from YouTube for like the two weeks I did it. <laughs> or three weeks I did it I was like I'm not coming back on here for these ungrateful people and it was such a horrible way to look at it it wasn't the fault of the platform and it wasn't the fault of an audience it was my fault because I wasn't consistently posting my audience didn't know what to expect from me first of all I had just started now there are a lot of people that says my first three videos I was at a hundred thousand that has never been my case. I've never gotten on a platform and grew exponentially fast. That's not my testimony. Some of us are a slow burn and that's okay. Every platform I've ever been on has taken me a really long time, has taken me effort, and it's still taking me effort. And that's okay. I realize that and I just keep plugging away. Because one thing you can never say about Fumi is that she is not consistent. Well, I, clearly I wasn't consistent on here, but I'm consistent to my craft. So I had to come up with a schedule that helped me with my consistency. So this year, January, I said, Fumi, 
you need to get back on YouTube. You need to figure out a consistency level that works for you and you need to stick with it. So I said every Wednesday, two o'clock, there's gonna be a video. Every Wednesday, two o'clock, there's gonna be a video. Sometimes on Sundays, there's gonna be a video, but I'm not holding myself to a Sunday. I'm holding myself to every Wednesday, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, there is going to be a video. Every day or every other day, there's going to be a YouTube short. At least twice a week, there's going to be a photo for my community tab that has links or tells a story or updates people on what's happening in my life. I committed to that. And that is what I'm going to stick to. Whether the videos get 10 views or whether the videos get 1,000 views, it doesn't matter. YouTube is search engine optimization. So your video that had 30 views one year could the next year pick up and next thing you know you're making all your money off that one video so figure out a consistency level that works for you that has been working for me to be able to grow kind of quickly on here and by quickly that's relative because to some people it's not that quick to me it's quick because I have set realistic expectations for my channel Number two, SEO optimization. One of the best things that's been helping me is going into YouTube Studio and looking up the analytics tab of my videos and suggested videos that people who watch my channel are searching for. I'm gonna put a video to the side of me kind of showing you what my analytics look like from like the search engine optimization section of it. So I know I am a luxury channel, right? I don't, that's what I'm categorized as because I make a lot of luxury content. That is what my channel is niched at. So when I go into my analytics to look at what people are searching for or what other creators that are in my niche are doing, I can say, oh, Fumi, look at this. The Amazon hauls are doing well. Maybe you should try Amazon haul. Or people are looking at Louis Vuitton right now. Maybe you should show your Louis Vuitton collection and which one works best for you. Um, people are searching up dupes. Maybe you can show dupes Y'all, one of my most watched videos, and it's it's 50,000, baby, when they hit 50,000, I was screaming. 50,000 might not be a lot to y'all, especially my seasoned creators that have been making. Now, on TikTok, I've had videos hit 10 million. On Instagram, I've had videos hit, you know, 5 million plus. On here, if a video hits 1,000, I'm rejoicing. I'm rejoicing. I'm so excited when it hits 1,000 because, again, I'm very realistic about the trajectory of my channel and the trajectory of my videos. I don't set myself up for expectations to be dashed. I'm very realistic about it. So when it hit 50,000, I was like, ah! And the reason why I made that video was because I went into my analytics and my analytics said, this is what people that watch your channel and other channels like you are searching for. Because they may not be able to afford the $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 bag, but they can afford something that looks like it and feels like it for $17.99, $20.99, or even $50.99. So make sure that you are taking a look at your analytics. Also, the videos that perform well analytically remake them so the first video hit 50,000 guess what I did I made another video I ordered $700 worth of items from Amazon and I redid the video I don't like hauls so these Amazon lookalikes are very hard for me because I am trying to get rid of a lot of items that are just hanging around in my house in my basement I do when I do these hauls is I call my best friends and I'm like come over I have 15 handbags come get them and literally the day I filmed it two of my best friends came over they took every handbag that I bought every shoe every sunglass that I bought from Amazon they took except for the ones that I wanted to keep because I want to see if I want to buy the original so when you uh, that was just a tangent I'm sorry <laughs> That was a tangent because clutter gives me anxiety at this point in my life. Um, so when you see that a video does well, go ahead and remake that video. When that first Amazon dupe hit 50000 I went ahead and ordered $700 worth of items to do another look-alike video. That video is currently at 5000 People are seeing me. They're seeing my channel. 
they're getting to come in community with me and I'm also helping them in one way or another. So make sure that you are watching your analytics. You're looking at your watch time. What video did people stay on the most? Maybe you need to make a part two of that because that means that they're interested. You can look at audience retention. You can look at where your audience is coming from. Were people browsing and they clicked on the video because the video did so well? Was your thumbnail engaging? Was your thumbnail and title enticing enough for them to stop? Look at all of that and then say, how can I replicate it on another video? This is for all platforms. If you have a video on TikTok that goes viral, stitch it, redo it, remake it again. If you have a video that goes viral on Instagram or a reel that goes viral, do the reel in a different way. People like to know what they can expect from you. It's just human nature. They want to know what they can expect when they come to your page. So if they know, hey, when she did this shoe haul, I really liked it. If I go back, maybe she'll do another shoe haul. Do another shoe haul because that's what your audience is looking for from you. So one, be consistent. Two, look at your analytics and create content based off your analytics. This one is SEO optimization. One of the best advice a friend gave me was to sign up for TubeBuddy or vidIQ. I ended up doing TubeBuddy. I actually like TubeBuddy. I love TubeBuddy. When it comes to searching out SEO optimized titles, it is the best. I can go look for keyword indicators. I'm gonna put a video to the side of like how I go through. So if I wanna do a luxury haul, I can type in luxury haul 2024 and I can see if people are actually searching for this title. You don't want to talk about things that people aren't looking for. You don't want to talk about titles and create a whole 30 minute video about something nobody's searching for on Google or YouTube. Google and YouTube are the same. They are search engine optimized, which means that they are search engines. That means that when you type something in it, you're going to get an answer from Google. You know, when you go to Google and you type in, how do I look smaller in a dress? It's going to take you to a YouTube video. It's going to take you to a blog. It's, it's going to take you to any website that has that in its title or in its body. That is how you SEO optimize your videos to make sure when people go search, your video pops up. So make sure that you've signed up for TubeBuddy or vidIQ or any other programs so that they can help you optimize your wording and they can help you optimize keywords. Keywords not just in your title, but keywords in your tags and keywords in your description. Make sure you're using keywords every single where you have to type out something for it to go on YouTube. Even the video itself. Let's say you're using Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro. You've written the video. The video is sitting on your desktop. Go ahead and retitle it. That SEO optimized title before you bring it into YouTube to upload it. So make sure that you are doing your homework when it comes to SEO optimization and the second thing that goes with SEO optimization is to make sure you have really, really great thumbnails. TubeBuddy and vidIQ will analyze your thumbnail to let you know if your thumbnail is attractive or um, is one that people will click on to watch more of your videos. One of the biggest things that's helped me is just really using Canva to create really great, engaging, colorful, bright covers that people will be enticed and want to click on when they're scrolling. Because the thing is, when people are scrolling on YouTube, you want to make sure that your content stands out. And the first thing that they see is that cover. So that cover needs to tell them a lot before they even click and sit down to watch. So make sure that you are optimizing your keywords, optimizing your title, and making sure that you have a really, really great thumbnail that's going to bring all the boys to the yard, per. The next tip I'll tell you, and I haven't done this yet, is to collaborate with other YouTubers on this platform. I live in Alabama. I don't know that many YouTubers here. I did know one. She ended up moving to New York. Shout out to Cameron Monet. Um, but if she was here, I would have definitely did a video with her. Find other YouTubers in your area. And I'm not saying find ones that have 300 thousand, five hundred thousand, a million followers, they're probably not going to want to work with you. Let's just be so honest. Don't hold it against them. They've worked really hard for their channel. They don't have to work with you. Find other people in your niche 
or doing something a little bit different, but you guys can collaborate together and create a really great video. And then their audience will be introduced to you and your audience will be introduced to them. So collaborate with other audience. Again, this isn't just for YouTube. This is for any and every platform that you're on. Find creators in your area and figure out a way that you can create content together, especially for YouTube. The next one is equipment. Now, start out with what you have. Baby, please start out with what you have. When I first started, and I'll put videos to the side, I was using my iPhone negative five, like the first iPhone God ever made. I started out with the iPhone. I didn't have this backdrop behind me. It was a blank white wall. I didn't have the lights. I didn't have uh, DSLR, SLR. I literally had my iPhone, and I just started creating on my iPhone. Also, my iPhone ran out of space. That's why I also quit. I was just so stressed out. Like, YouTube really stressed me out in the beginning because I had no plan in place for it. I just was like, I'm going to start and did not sit down and count the cost. Um, so start with what you have. But when you want to elevate, go on Amazon and buy equipment. Even if you buy one ring light, that's all you need. Let me show you my basement without any of these lights. Hold on. I have a really great camera, so it's lightened up, but there's so many shadows on my face. I have the Canon ER Mark II, really, really great camera, but in order to be able to see me nicely, in order for the shadows to be gone, I need to make sure I have proper lighting. So even if I buy one ring light, let me show you the difference. Do you see the difference of just this one ring light? I will link all my camera equipment, including my mic, my camera, everything, the lighting, this ring light down below. I got it from Amazon. On, but just one ring light is so much better when you are competing against millions of people just putting out videos you want to make sure that your video stands out let me turn on my other lights there we go you want to make sure that your videos stand out so videos that are blurry I have uploaded blurry videos I'll put a picture to the side I have uploaded videos with bad lighting when I was first starting out I just was putting anything out there like and I'm glad because you can go back I haven't been on here that long but you can still go back and look at my old videos and see like I just started with what I had um but when you start elevating this is for when you want to start elevating you're making a little money from your content invest back into your business and buy proper lighting the difference that lighting makes is a difference between a brand going with you and a brand going with your neighbor who has better lighting. It's a difference between somebody stopping and watching your video because they can see you clearly, the background is beautiful, you are beautifully well lit, everything looks good, than for them to try to squint and be like, why does this look so weird? Why, what's, because blurry videos, nobody's gonna stay on. Like, I've seen videos that are so blurry, automatically your eyes start squinting, you start getting a headache and you click off of it. So make sure that you are optimizing your content with great lighting, great sound, great camera to get people to stay and watch it. Because your information may be amazing, but if you're not using the right vehicle, people won't get in to ride with you on this journey called content creation. Oh, baby, that will preach. That was a word right there. Oh, what time is it? Oh my God. Okay, good, we're doing good. The last thing I wanna say when it comes to growing on YouTube is don't give up. I just wanna encourage you for a minute. I've been creating content for a while. I've been creating content consistently for a while. There are a lot of creators who started a year ago that are doing so much better than me. There's so many creators that have started on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, um, that are far above and beyond me. They're influencers that I have helped on their content creation journey, and they have surpassed me by hundreds of thousands of followers. Do I quit? No. Do I stop? No. Do I look at them and feel like, Oh, Fumi, you just need to stop because this is in the space for you. No. Do I think, Fumi, oh my God, you're getting closer to 40. You need to quit. Who wants to see a 40-year-old doing this? No. At the end of the day, it's a passion. And a passion will always make room for you. The room may not be exactly what you think. The room may not be open exactly when you thought it was going to be open. But if you are persistent, if you knock, if you knock, if you knock, the door will open. Your consistency 
will open any door that you want to get into. I want you to realize it's a journey, not a destination. If you help one person, you've done your passion. If you help two people, you fulfilled your passion. If you help 200,000 people, you fulfilled your passion. Don't let the numbers get to your head. Don't let the accolades get to your head. Don't let the lack of accolades get to your head. Keep your head down and create. You're gonna get to a point where you wanna quit. You're gonna get to a point where you feel undervalued, underloved, underappreciated. You're gonna get to a point where the same girls, the same men that you started with are outpacing you by the thousands. I don't want you to grow weary and well doing. I don't want you to compare yourself to what others are doing. Acknowledge it, acknowledge that it hurts. It does, it doesn't feel good to put in work and not see the fruit of your labor. It doesn't feel good, but it cannot and will not stop you from going. Don't say, oh my God, look at Fumi, she's growing. Look at her, I've been on here 10 years and look, if not for the grace of God, if not for these tips that I've given you, baby, I, I wouldn't even be sitting here talking to you. There's a reason for every single thing. There's a reason why it's taking you a little bit longer. There's a reason for everything. Set a plan in place for your channels. Figure out what you want to talk about and then create the content that's going to help, that's going to educate, that's going to motivate, that's going to inspire somebody coming after you, somebody next to you, and somebody above you. But if this is what you feel like you're supposed to be doing, please don't give up. Keep going. I'm cheering for you. You're cheering for you. And your entire community is cheering for you. I don't care how big or small that community is. They need you. They want to hear from you. So I really hope this video helped. Definitely save it for later. Share it with a content creator that needs it. And I love y'all. Thank you so much for coming into community with me on YouTube. Thank you for coming into community with me on all my other platforms. You are the reason I am who I am on social media because who I am off social media. That's God. Who I am and the voice that I have is because of you. And I appreciate you more than you will ever know. If you're not following me on all my other social media platforms, please think about following me. It is Fumi Ford across all platforms. And if you haven't subscribed, think about hitting the subscribe button and joining our growing community. I love y'all. Mean it. Bye.